for Bug comes to bite Desmond Ritter and the Falcons. Yep, that's Atlanta Falcons quarterback Desmond Ritter. You're probably not wondering why he's in this position because we all saw the horrible interception that he threw against the 1-12 Carolina Panthers. You're probably saying, Sean Jay, we should be used to it by now. We see interceptions every game. We see fumbles as well, or we may see both. So what's your point? Well, the question that I have is how? How did he get here? Such a young player, promising guy. How did he get here? How did you get here? That's a little bit more trickier question. But for me, it started in the first quarter on third and two. Okay, so on this play here, we got Tyler Algier as an up back in an off backfield set, right? Tyler Algier is in a full back's position here, and he's going to be the lead blocker on this play. And this is where the theme happened for me watching this game and all over Twitter you saw the questions popping up starting on this play here right questioning Arthur Smith so you got Tyler Algier being the lead blocker on this toss play to the left for B. John Robinson all right you do have a free guy here in Frankie Louvu, but the missed block happens here up top and that allows for Dante Jackson to get around and get his hands on B. John Robinson and Frankie Louvu uh, finishes the play out here. So this started the theme of what are we doing, Arthur Smith? Why are we running the ball with Tyler Algier being the up back? Well, Arthur said, yo, hold on, guys. This play was really set up to be one of our short yardage play. All right. And twice it was able to get us third and one plays, right? We were successful in this formation twice after it was initially ran. So, okay, Arthur, I'll let you have that one. But the first one didn't work, but it started up the question of why aren't we throwing the ball on third down? This is the very next play on fourth down, right? Fourth down, this play, it's really called well, but if it was blocked correctly, it could have worked. Now watch this play, right? Right now we have hat on hats, right? So we have hat on hats. And our free guy here, again, is Frankie Louvu, right? And also you have an unblocked guy here, Brian Burns. But we're going up the left side, and if we block it correctly, we may can get this up in there. Boom. But look at this. This is called getting your ass whooped, people. All right, we got ass kickings right up in the middle here, and this is why a play does not work. Right, look at 99 here in the middle. 99 pushes the center into the hole. The running back has nowhere to go. Uh, my man Derek Brown blows up the backup right guard, Hinton. Right, this play cannot work, does not work because of the personnel. So when we talk about play calling, I harp on I harp on this a lot of times. It's the execution, man. It's the guys that are on the field that really determines if plays work or not, right? So this time, the big guys up front for the Carolina Panthers ensured that this play did not work, right? Pushed them into the hole, nowhere for Bijan to go, right? Next play here. We're still running with the theme. Why aren't we throwing the ball on third? in or fourth down situations. Third and eight here. Another run play. Another time for B. John Robinson, the number eight pick, who we put a lot of draft capital into, and we give him the ball in these important situations. And we expect for a number eight pick type of play to happen. But look at this run play, guys. Third and eight, running the ball again. Question. Running backs, if we have running backs out there, guys, speak to me on this play. Let, let's go back, and, and we want to catch the handoff. All right, watch B. John Robinson's footwork here. Right, when he catches – no, when he gets the ball, it's going to hop, skip in the hole. Hop, skip right there. Hop, skip again. Right? So, what are we doing here, guys? So, are we taking the ball from the handoff? And are we bursting through the hole? Are we hop skipping, trying to 
shake and bake, right? You can say, well, we may get two or three yards here. There's no telling. There's no telling what we get on this play, right? You can take it up here. Maybe you can break one. Keith Smith is able to get a hand on him. Eh, you may not like that one. Well, what about bending it back here, right, with your left guard here potentially blocking 5-4? You didn't like that one, but you know what he's going to do? He's going to hop skip again and try to go outside. To me, this is just not how you would want him to run the ball here, right? A lot of jumping inside of the hole, and then we try to get outside. Doesn't work. Third and eight. Why aren't we throwing the ball? It just keeps popping up. Like, why aren't we throwing the ball? Third and 11 here, right? We know this play. This is the B. John Robinson fumble. And I want you to watch 13 down here. Troy Hill, right? He's going to display the dysfunction of the Atlanta Falcons offense. Now watch this play. All right, look at Kyle Pitts, guys. Kyle Pitts here, right? Look at the alignment here. We have three Atlanta Falcons players right here, guys. So we got these three players here. Three players, and we have two Carolina Panthers players out here, right? Numbers game. Numbers. We should have the numbers on this play. So we have a three over two out here. And watch what happens. Three guys end up blocking one guy. Kyle Pitts, I believe Kyle Pitts should have reached out and picked up Troy, right? Kyle Pitts should have reached out and picked up Troy on this play. Kyle should have came out here, right? In my opinion, guys. So I'm not in the film room. I'm not in the wide receiver, quarterback, tight end room. But my opinion, Kyle Pitts should have reached out and got 13 on this play. But instead, we end up blocking three on one. And the one guy that we didn't block actually gets in to create the fumble. Like, what are the freaking eyes of this? We end up blocking one player with three guys. And the other guy that we didn't block ends up jumping in there and knocking the ball loose on our number eight pick in the NFL draft, B. John Robinson. Right? Like, how does that happen? This total dysfunction. It feels like they're collapsing. So, got scared earlier in the game. If you guys peeped this out earlier in the game with B. John Robinson, you saw him sitting there with his jacket on, wiping his arms off, you kind of knew Trouble was in the air. So let's move it on. But the theme is still there. Why aren't we throwing the ball? And you probably answered this yourself by now. This is why we're not throwing the ball. And I'm going to throw this precursor to the interception out there. So this pass happened on the, play, on the drive before the fumble. And it just made me wonder when I saw this play. I was like, what the F? are we doing here like what what is this like who are you throwing it to like and I, and I want you to look at his footwork on this play right it's going to look eerily similar to what you're going to see on the next one just watch the mechanics on it like you are not that guy pal like what is that like look at the hop skip that he does when he throws like what is that you're not that guy, pal. Like, what, what? what's that? Like, it reminds me of that Patrick Ewing video when he asked his player, like, who told you to take that shot? Like, do you practice that? Like, why are you taking it in the game? You don't practice that move, right? And here, this is where we're going to see it on the interception, right? And Arthur Smith did say it himself. This was a one read or quarterback run. The theme of this play was one read, quarterback run. So if your number one isn't there, you should be running the ball as a quarterback. And how I know so, look at Cordell Hodge down here. 
he is actually going to start blocking on this play. He's going to look back at Ritter and just block, just block. All right, he's starting to block because he is expecting for the quarterback to run the ball. Watch him look back. I'm going to block. I'm going to block now because he should be running into all of our surprise, to everyone's surprise. This, this is why we've been holding him back from doing things like this all game. So on those third down situations, this is why we were running the ball on third and four, third and eight, third and 11, because we're trying to avoid situations exactly as this. So Arthur Smith was damned if he did and damned if he didn't. A tough hill to die on. Desmond Ritter's hill is one of the worst. I'm pretty sure Arthur Smith did not see that for himself. Hey, it's your boy Sean J, man. Like, share, and subscribe. Let me know how you feel. I'm out.